If you have loads of TV shows and movies saved on either a hard drive or a load of DVDs, and you're looking to keep this all in one place and be able to stream it at a press of a button, then Plex Media Server might be for you. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a Plex Media Server on the Synology NAS. However, it's not just limited to this. You can set it up on either a Windows PC, Mac OS, Linux, Docker, and a wide range of different NAS boxes. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and like and comment below if you found this video useful. All the products I've used are in the description below and they are linked to my Amazon affiliate account. So if you wanna check them out. Anyway, that's enough of the intro, let's jump straight in. So we have our Synology NAS, we've logged into it. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is install Plex. If you haven't already set up your Synology NAS, then I have a video linked in the description below to it. Feel free to run through that and it will show you how to get it all set up and configured. So let's go to Package Center first and I'm just gonna type in Plex. We see Plex Media Server, we click on it. We can have a quick look through it if there is anything, any other information you wanna see in here. Um, and then we just click Install. We'll let that run off in the background while it goes off and installs. Okay, so that's gone off and installed, so we now just click open, and then this takes us to the Plex install. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here, just so you can see a little bit more. Once you've done this, you'll be greeted with this page which says Plex Web, and it'll ask you to sign in. So I'm just gonna continue with email, and there we go, we're logged in. It shows you quickly how Plex works. It shows you you run Plex, whether you run it on your computer or as we are doing here on the NAS. Plex then scans your media and automatically organizes it and pulls metadata down from the internet to add it. And then it plays your media on your favorite devices. So let's go ahead and play this. Plex Pass allows you to have some additional features within Plex itself. So just a couple of them here, you can enjoy mobile sync. So what that allows you to do is um, download your media offline so if you're going through the underground or you're going away on holiday where you know you're not going to have any um, you're not going to have any data on your flight so you can synchronize it and download it and keep an offline copy you can use live tv or dvr so you can connect a tuner so this the nas doesn't have this functionality but you can connect your live tv to it so you can actually watch that from anywhere in the world so you can have something set up in um, where I am at home and if I go away on holiday to somewhere else I can watch TV, TV channels that are in the UK. Parental controls, web hooks if you want to automate some of your systems. Um, you have a real-time server dashboard which allows you to look at the history of the bandwidth, um, top users and what media is being used and um, premium music magic. So there's three different options here. You can go $3.99 a month, $31.99 a year, or you can just pay $95.99 for a lifetime. So if you feel you're gonna use this forever and you really like and you're, bought and you're buying into the Plex ecosystem, then that would be the one for you. For the demonstration today, I'm not gonna be signing up, so I will just press the X just here. And it says we've now found a server. So it's basically saying that you have now got a server set up. So what do you wanna call it? So I'm gonna call this Homeplex. Um, allow me to access my media outside my home. So it will make it web facing, which is fine. We click next. Um, I'm not gonna organize the media just yet because I'm gonna show you what we need to do to add the media in first. We then click next. We're not gonna download any apps and then we go ahead. So these are just ones I think that were already on here. There's just web shows. What we actually wanna do is go here and click more. And this is our home Plex server. So if we click on settings in the top right hand corner, this goes through just some of the settings you have on here. So you've got your account with your username and details down below, authorized devices. So what's actually accessing it so far, um, users, so we have one user, and then you go through some settings here. So your set, uh, general settings, um, the quality, so what uh, internet streaming quality you wanna be able to use. So at the moment, we're set to a maximum of 720p, um, but depending on your internet connection, you can go all the way up to 1080p if you wanna be able to stream it. That's no problem. Um, if we scroll down just here, we can save, um, debug, 
we're disabling the debug level at the moment and how you want the web player to look. So just a few simple settings just there. So if we go back to Plex now and we click on our home Plex server, there's nothing set up, which is fine. It's what we expected. For some reason, it was showing that I didn't have access to this Plex server. So I logged out and logged back in again and it was working perfectly fine. Moving on, the first thing I wanna show you is obviously the file location. So I'm gonna zip back to my Synology NAS. We wanna to go to control panel, um, shared folders, and you can see we have a Plex volume just here. I've also plugged in a USB drive where some of my data is, so I'm actually gonna move that onto the Plex volume. Moving across, if I quickly go to file station as well, you can see I actually don't have access to the Plex share and that's because of the user I'm logged into. So make sure you have the relevant permissions. You go to um, here, you click edit, go to permissions. So I'm logged in as inside wire, which shows me as no access, but I want read write access. So we click okay. And then now if I go back here, you can see I have my Plex folder. So within here, I wanna to go to the Plex library and I'm gonna create a folder in here called content. And then within the content folder, I'm gonna create a folder called movies. And I'm also gonna create a folder called TV shows. And maybe a third folder called IW videos. You can organize, so this is completely flexible. You can organize this however you want. So within your movies folder, you can go kids, you can arrange it by genre, you can, you can arrange it however you want, it's entirely up to you. Let's just go ahead and move some of the files in here. I've gone ahead and populated those folders. So if we go into library, content, um, there's some videos that we can add in here. I haven't added anything in here. There's some movies, you can add some movies in here and I've added in a couple of TV shows. So um, there's a few in here. I have quickly also populated um, some in here. It's just some raw footage of my recording. So I've populated those in there as well. So now we go back to Plex. If we go back to uh, here, it shows you the libraries. So we don't have any libraries at the moment. So we click add library. Um, we're gonna put other videos first and I'm gonna name this one IW videos and um, we click next and we browse for media. So inside here, you can go to volume one, you can see Plex, you can see library, content, IW videos and we click add and we click add the library. So that's now going to go off and look at those libraries, uh, look at those videos and get them added in. We also at the same time are going to go to TV programs. So I'm just going to call this TV shows. We click next, we browse for the media. So same again, you would go into volume one, you'd go into Plex, library, content, TV shows. And also you would do the same with movies as well. So if you had some movies that you wanted to, if you wanted to add in all your movies, you would do that here also as well. You would go ahead and add your movies. So now that we have these two edited, you can always edit these at a later point break them down further whatever you wish to do it's the world is your oyster you can do whatever you want to do you can configure it as much as you want so just running down the list then so you've got dashboard alerts sync conversations uh, general these are some of the ones we went in earlier remote access so currently it's not available outside the network because i probably haven't done uh port forwarding which is if i click learn more it's probably going to tell you about enabling remote access and allowing port forwarding. I'll probably look at this towards the end of the video um, just to show you how that's done. Um, agents, libraries, I'm not gonna go through all of these because there's a lot in here and there's a lot of messing around you can do. So what I'm gonna do now is go back to home. You can see now we have our two areas. So we have some IW videos. These are just some of the videos, as I said, I took. Um, not all of the video file types are compatible. So I know there's a couple of files in here that we did add in that haven't actually come through. So an incompatible file type. So if something doesn't show up, just keep that in mind that possibly the file type isn't compatible. So we go to TV shows and you can see here, um, just by the name of the shows, it's pulled down um, the thumbnails for them, which is really good. I think that's really handy. And that's really uh, the basic you can do to get started. You can add in photos and movies as well. 
Now, if we wanted to watch one of these, just to show you a quick preview, so we can just click on this, and you can see it starts straight away. Um, you can see it's fairly, it takes a second or two to buffer, but you can see that it works straight away. So then you minimize it and it goes down here, um, and then you can just click the X if you no longer wish to watch it. And it it keeps exactly where you were. So if you want to continue at another point, you can do also as. So what I'm going to quickly show you now is how you do this from your app. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do this from the app. You can go sign in, um, continue with email, and then type in your email address and password again. So once you logged in, it says Plex needs local access, so you authorize, and it's going to go across the network and try and find your Plex server. So let's just give that a second while it does that. There we go, it's found it, home Plex, we click continue, and now it's gonna load the sources. So you can choose which ones you want. Um, we want the TV shows, we don't want live TV, uh, we don't want that, 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 or that. So we can just go down and click continue. Yeah, we can allow it to send us notifications. And there you go, this is pretty much what you said, what we uh, started a few minutes ago. So this TV show here, we can resume, resume exactly from where we were. So as you can see here, the, the phone playback is limited to one minute. So you need to either be, a, you need to either have the one-time purchase or you need to be the Plex Pass subscriber. It's 4 99 to remove it or you can subscribe to Plex Pass. But you can see that's basically how it works and you'll get one minute of playtime. So I don't know if that's per day or just complete, I'm not sure, but hey, um, if you want this, you're going to have to sign up to one of the uh, one or the other. Just one final thing before we are done here. Um, just quickly go back over the remote access. So you can see the public IP can't come in. So we go to, so I actually have a Unify network set up here. So you want to go to settings and then security. If we go to firewall just down here, um, I've already created this one earlier, but it is, so this one just here at the top. Um, so Plex inbound from the internet, your source is anything on this port, and then your destination would be the IP of your NAS. Um, or if you're not sure what the IP is, it's up here if you haven't given it a static IP already. Um, once you do that, again, I've already done it, I've hit retry at the button down here, and then it says your, your Plex server is fully accessible outside your network. So to sign in, you just need to go to here, plex.tv forward slash web, and you will be able to access this Plex server. I really hope you found this video useful, and if you want to see some more tutorials around Plex, drop me a comment in the section below and I'll see what I can do. Again, all the products I've used in this video are in the description below, so feel free to check them out. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.